Hi, I'm Maria. Welcome to another special edition of Mars Month on NASA Now. We want to study the habitability of Mars. We want to really figure out if it was ever capable of supporting life. And the way we do that is to really follow the evidence of water on Mars. One of the most interesting things about Mars is that uh, it, it's changed over time. What we see on Mars today is very different from what uh, occurred in the distant past. And water is the real interesting thing that we're looking for, the history of water, how it's changed over time. We'll have more on the science of curiosity, but here's what's happening on NASA now. Here are some of the first images captured by the Mars Science Laboratory, Curiosity, after touching down on the surface of Mars. Curiosity has a large assortment of cameras located in different sections of the rover, all with various functions and abilities. Based on these pictures, telemetry, and confirmation of positioning by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and Mars Odyssey Orbiter, Curiosity is right where scientists wanted the rover to land. The rover's location is ideally situated in an area with the kind of geology that will allow Curiosity to assess whether Mars ever had an environment capable of supporting microbial life. Curiosity is not only the largest rover to roam the surface of Mars, it is also the most sophisticated rover to date and is packed with a ton of science equipment. We caught up with Dr. Ashwin Vasavada, a deputy project scientist for the Mars Science Laboratory. Dr. Vasavada told us how Curiosity is a robotic geologist with a very sophisticated assortment of instruments that will give scientists and researchers more vital information as a search for extraterrestrial life continues. As a scientist on this mission, I help lead the team of over 300 scientists around the world that will be running the experiments once we get to Mars. When Curiosity touches down on the surface of Mars, we have to make sure the rover touched down in a healthy state. So we run a lot of checks on the rover. It checks all of its systems out. We move all the different mechanisms to make sure they still operate successfully. And then we turn the keys over to the science team, really, which I'm a part of. And the first thing we'll investigate is our immediate surroundings. Curiosity's main objective is to figure out if the place where we land on Mars, Gale Crater, ever was a habitable environment. We'd love to know whether Mars is a habitable planet today or even at some point in the past. And for that, we need to look for the key ingredients of life. Life on Earth, and that's the only life we really know of, needs a few things. It needs water. Our bodies are made mostly of water. It needs atoms like carbon. Uh, all of our cells contain carbon as an essential building block in the atoms and molecules in our bodies. And it needs a source of energy. We use food and sunlight helps with the food and all those sorts of things. So we were gonna look for three things in this environment on Mars to figure out if it ever was a habitable environment. We've designed Curiosity to be a robot geologist and a robot geochemist. We take a lot of pictures so that human geologists here on Earth can kind of get a feeling for what it would be like if they were walking on Mars. Another big achievement that we're going to do with Curiosity is to take samples of rock uh, with a drill. We'll drill into rocks, get powder from those rocks, and deliver those samples to some fairly sophisticated laboratory instruments located inside the rover. Those instruments will be doing some chemical and geochemical experiments to figure out exactly what those rocks are made out of and do they contain those key ingredients for life. One of the reasons the rover is so big is because the entire front end of the rover contains two very sophisticated analytical laboratories. This is where we drop the samples that we acquire from rocks and soils into these laboratories. Uh, these laboratories do two things. One of them is called an X-ray diffractometer. Now that just means that you shine X-rays through samples of powdered rock 
And because the rocks are made out of many crystals, when you shine an X-ray beam through, it creates a little rainbow pattern. Now that rainbow pattern is very distinctive for what types of minerals are in the rocks. And the minerals that are in rocks tell us the environment that occurred when those minerals formed. The other big instrument is called a mass spectrometer gas chromatograph. So it's a pretty sophisticated instrument. By sending the gas that we bake off of the rocks through this gas chromatograph, we'll be able to detect any organic molecules, carbon-containing molecules that are in those rocks. If we found any evidence that would suggest that life took hold on Mars like it did on Earth, we would immediately want to follow that up and explore it in greater detail. And one of the best things we could do to follow on that would be to bring rocks back from Mars to Earth so we could study them in our laboratories here on Earth. Now a month since landing in August, Curiosity is giving Dr. Vasavada and his team amazing amounts of data, bringing us closer than ever to answering the question about life on Mars. One of the key instruments that scientists have been using to unlock the mysteries of Mars has been specialized spacecraft in orbit around Mars. Here's an activity that uses real data from Mars. Teachers, you and your students can be part of an ongoing project using images captured with the Themis Visible Wavelength Camera on board the Mars Odyssey spacecraft. Look for Mars Student Imaging Project. You'll find it on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. Join us for another special Mars edition on the next NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.